What's up creators? So in today's video, we're going to be talking about the block pattern of Flutter. Block stands for business logic component. It's a way to manage your state in Flutter. In the previous video, we talked about stateless and stateful widgets. That's one way to manage your state using set state or whatever. But when you get into bigger applications, you want to use some type of other state management probably. Block separates your business logic from your UI elements. That way your code is cleaner and it's more easier to manage. And so basically the, the way block works is, let's say you have your block. You will have your state. The block will be providing your state and you will give the block events that happen. So let's say, let's say you have a, a button called increment and the button called decrement when you click this you'll pass an increment event increment something happens within the block we don't really care and you'll get a state returned and whatever the state is so let's say you have some number in here the state return will be one if it was zero before because it got incremented same thing with the, the minus. Let's say you send an event called decrement. Decrement, you'll get returned to state. And if you started with zero, it'll go to one. And then if you decrement again, it'll go back to zero. So this is just a very simple example. Obviously, for bigger applications, like where you need to call some repository or something, you don't really, oh, there might be some more complex things going on in the block. But for this, we're just trying to show off how it works, so we're going to create an app similar to this. Like I said, the events are going to be inputs. The states are going to be outputs. In, in your UI element, your UI screen, you'll have a thing called Block Builder. So Block Builder basically handles building a widget that responds to state. So your whatever this was here, let's just pull it out. So say one zero to one to zero. This will be wrapped in the block builder. Okay, block builder. And then this will change according to what state is passed into it. And then the last thing we're going to cover is block provider. So block provider, let's say you have this block builder. You will have it wrapped in a block provider. This block provider will be able to provide it, the block that we created to any widget below it. Let's say this isn't the only thing that responds to that state. We want to have another block over here, but it's using the same block. That might be a bit confusing, but basically the block provides, provides the block that is created to widgets in the subtree, right? Actually, that last diagram was atrocious, so I made another one real quick to explain it better maybe. So your block provider provides the block. This is the block. This is the block we created right here. So you pass the block provider, which has the block. This passes the block to the block builder, which creates the UI. The UI is created based on the state that you pass it from the block. And then so you send events to the block and they send the state to the block builder. And this gets generated. So I hope that makes a little bit more sense. Now let's get into code. All right, so we have here a very basic app. I didn't do much to it, just have the main sending you to the home screen. In the home screen, we have a scaffold with an app bar, a center with three widgets, a text, where that is just a constant one right now, and two buttons called increment and decrement. So the first thing we're going to want to do is to add the packages that we need. So we're going to need Flutter lock, and we're going to need Equatable. Equatable package is, is a package that lets you basically check whether instances of classes are equal. So next thing we, you want to do is add an extension called 
block by Felix Angelov. This will just help you create the actual blocks. It's not absolutely necessary, but I feel like if you're going to use the Flutter block library, then you should definitely use it. Then we get here. So we want to create our, our block. We go to block, new block. We'll have a counter block. And this is where it asks, do you want to use the equatable package in this block? We will do yes. I don't think we actually have a use for it currently, but I mean, it doesn't hurt. So package block that block does not exist. So the issue here is I named my actual code flutter block. So it thinks it's using the same thing. So I got to switch that up real quick. All right, so we need to rename our project to Flutter Block Pattern. So now we don't have all these errors and it can actually uh, get the package. So we'll have our actual block here. This is the one that sends, does the logic once the event is sent. This defines the type of events we can have. And this defines the states. So we're going to want two events. One of them is going to be called increment event. And you have to extend your counter event. And then another one's going to be called, so you have to, when you use equatable, you have to pass in this, this thing. To be honest, I'm not too sure. I just started learning about block during the live stream I made. So I'm not 100% sure about all of this, but I will be making more videos about block as I go through it. But this is how you define the events. You have to find, make a class name and then extend the, the abstract class counter event. And then the next thing we're going to want to do is define the states. So we're just going to want one state and we're gonna have a, a counter here. We're going to have one state with one counter, this that counter, and I think that's all we need. So we have we have our state. Oh no, I think we need we need the equatable counter. Yes. So we have our state and our count and our events defined. Then we go to the actual block. So our initial state. We want it to be the counter to start at zero. And why does this problem occur? So if you see if you see this problem, it's because our counter state is abstract. We don't want it to be abstract. We just want one one state and just simple counter state. So there we go. In the block, we have this, and then we we'll define two events. So go if your event that you're being passed is increment event, do something. Else if, if your event is decrement event, do something else. All right, so we have our blocks pretty much set up. So this is the actual block. We have our counter event, the two types of events that we defined here, which is increment and decrement. Then we have our state, which is which we only have one type of state, which is just our counter state. And our block is pretty much defined. So here, we want to do yield. I want a new counter state with a counter that is state dot counter uh, plus one. So this is saying so yield means that we are it's kind of a return for streams. So the way the way block works is it's a stream to the block builder that we that we are going to make. Remember we went over the block builder, so it's gonna basically be sending 
a stream to that. Yield is equivalent to like a return to a function is a yield to a stream. So with this statement here, we're basically saying we want to return a new state to the stream that we're passing back to our block builder. So let's get into the actual UI of this. And the main is where I want to define my block provider. Block provider. Doesn't want to pop up. Come on, man. Import package flutter block slash flutter block dot dart. Right. Yeah, and I don't know why I refreshed. So we want to create here we want to create our actual counter block. So we have that there. There's our counter block. That's all we really need to do on, on this. Then when we get in here, we want so our let me our block provider will send this block to any widgets that are below it. So we're creating our block here, and then we we'll, should be able to access it from our home.dart. Let's say we want to wrap this in a widget. The widget we want to wrap in is called block builder. And once again, it doesn't want to help me out. Let's copy this here. The block builder takes in, needs a builder argument. Our builder will just be this. And instead of comma, we want a semicolon. And then we can remove everything we did here. So that's fine. I don't know why I did that, but we need to define our block. Not make a new block. We need to define our block. And the way we can get it is by using block provider dot of counter block and then context. So we need to import counter block. There we go. What, are you, what do you need now? Add requirement argument for block builder. Okay, we need to return the center, not, not just type it out. Okay. So block provider of called with a context that does not contain a block of type counter block. So I figured out my issue. The issue is you need to return the block. There we go. All right, problem solved. So next problem. So our block builder, we're passing the block with the with the this is this the block that we created there using the block provider. We get it here and pass it into the block builder. And our block builder should be able to access all that stuff. So according to the state we have, we can print what our counter value is. So it's initialized to zero. And you can check, you can change this value to, let's say, five. And restart it. It won't change because it hasn't rebuilt the the block builder because the state hasn't changed. But if you reload it, you should see five. So that's that's how we're getting the state and displaying it. Now, how we trigger events. So same way, you want to get the block that we have from the block provider, and then you want to add an event. And for the increment, we want to add an increment event. Yeah. And then let's just add this also for decrement. Instead of increment event, we want to create a decrement event. And now, fingers crossed, everything should work. Yes. We have six, seven, eight, five, and we can decrement and everything. If you put a breakpoint in the block, you can see where the state gets changed. Right here, the breakpoint should hit. State gets updated. 
See a new state gets called every time we increment. Yes. So let's go through the whole thing one more time. So the counter state defines all the states that we can return. Here we only have one and it's the counter. Counter events is a different types of events that could happen for the specific block. We only have two increment and decrement. The counter block is where most of the action happens. Initial state defines what it is initially. Map event to state is just as it sounds. We get an event, we want to map it to a new state. Then we, depending on what event is called, we want to return or yield a new state. Then in our, then we have a block provider that provides the block that we created to all the widgets in its subtree. And then we finally have a block builder that reacts to new states and is able to, so these events don't have to be in here. They could be elsewhere, I'm pretty sure. But this block builder reacts to state and you can show the new state. What I was saying, I think these raise buttons could be outside of the block builder. They should still work. So that's the very intro of block. I will be learning more about block and hopefully we'll have a, a couple other videos. And maybe we'll even look into other state state management options too. That's pretty much it though. Uh, this code will be on GitHub. There's a link in the description. If you have any questions or anything, make sure to leave it in the comments. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure to like, subscribe, and share it. And thank you for watching.